Hi everyone, my name is Janae Buckner. I attend Clark Atlanta University. I'm currently in Calculus 1 and I'm doing a podcast on derivatives. Okay, so I'm in Dr. Lewis's class and right now we are learning about derivatives, chain rule, constant multiple rule, that type of thing. So today what I'll be doing is running through all the rules and giving you examples and, you know, just teaching you what you may or may not need to know depending on what class you take. Okay, so first we have derivatives. Okay, so derivative is also known as a slope. Instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed. Okay, the definition of a derivative is the limit as h approaches zero of the function f times the quantity of x plus h minus f times x divided by h. We also will use the point slope rule, which is y minus y1 equals m, which is your slope, times the quantity of x minus x1. When you need, when you find y and x is basically just a point, which most of the time you have to find or it may be provided for you. You use this when you're, you use both of these actually, when you're finding the slope of a tangent line or the equation of a tangent line, how did I say? Okay? So next we have graphs. So, we have no derivatives, but continuous. So these graphs right here, 1, 2, and 3, have no derivatives, but they are continuous. Um, then we have derivatives, but not continuous. So we have a jump in the graph right here. We have a hole in the graph right here. And we have asymptotes. And these are derivatives, but they are not continuous. Okay. Next, we have the constant function derivative. Okay, so when we have the constant function derivative, we have the derivative of c, which is your constant, and it always equals zero. No matter what it is, it always equals zero. Okay, so c is your function, and whenever you have x, or you may have t or s, it's just respect to that variable. So in this case we have x, so this just means with respect to x. Um, and x is independent. So when we take the derivative of the function 7, we take the derivative of 7 and the derivative of 7 will be 0 because uh, 7 is a constant and any constant alone without x or anything else is 0. Next, we have the power rule. So, the power rule. When you take the derivative of the power rule, you have a variable with a power. Okay? Or usually a constant with a power. So, what you do is you bring the, co the, the exponent to the front, and then you subtract that exponent by 1. So, the derivative of x to the fourth power is equal to 4x to the power of 4 minus 1. And then that would be equal to 4x to the third power. All we did was subtract the power by 1 in order to get our answer, which is right here. Next, we have the constant multiple rule. And the constant multiple rule is basically taking the function, taking the derivative of c and the function. So it equals c times the derivative of the function. So the function equals uh, x to the negative third power divided by 5, which also equals 1 over 5 to the x to the negative third power. So when we take the derivative of this, we we'll use f prime, which means you're taking a derivative of x, equals 1 over 5, and then you're taking the derivative of x to the negative third power. Okay, so we took 
1 over 5, which is basically the uh, x is also known as 1 over 5. We separated 1 over 5 from x to the negative third power. So what we did was we brought 1 over 5 right here, and then we took, we're taking the derivative of x to the negative third power. Okay? So we have 1 over 5 times the quantity of negative 3x to the negative fourth power. So what we did was we brought 1 fifth down and we took the derivative of x to the negative third power. So all we did was subtract negative 3 by 1, which gave us negative 4. And then we brought negative 3 to the front of x which gave us one-fifth times the quantity of negative 3x to the fourth power, negative fourth power. And now all we need to do is multiply across. So we have negative 3x to the negative fourth power over 5. And all we did was multiply across. So 1 times negative 3x to the four, negative fourth power, and basically this has a 1 under it. So we multiply that across and multiply 5 across, and we got negative 3x to the negative 4th power divided by 5. So next we have the derivative of e to the x, which is really simple. The derivative of e to the x is always e to the x. Um, shows you right here, whenever you have e to the x, you always take the derivative, and the derivative of e to the x will always be e to the x. And here's the graph of e to the x, um, depending on which side you're approaching from. If you're going to the left, you're getting closer and closer to zero. If you're going to the right, you're getting closer and closer to infinity. Okay. Next we have the quotient rule. Quotient rule is really simple. Um, all we do for the quotient rule is when you have an x in your numerator and an x in your denominator, you take the denominator right here times the derivative of the numerator right here. So you got g of x right here, which is the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator, which is f of x, plus, or oh, minus, I'm sorry, minus your numerator, which is right here, times the derivative of your denominator, which is right here. Then all you do is divide it all by your denominator squared. And that's really as simple as it is. So, an easy way to remember it is low d high minus high d low divided by low squared. Low d high minus high d low divided by low squared. Alright. Next we have the product rule. The product rule is pretty much simple as the quotient rule. Um, you use the product rule when you have two x's multiplying across from each other. Okay? So you take so you take the first function, which is f of x times well f of x times the derivative of the second function. So this is your first, this is your second. Take the first times the derivative of the second right here. Then you plus, you add those two. And you take the second function, which is g of x, times the derivative of the first function. So it's real simple. It's the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Right? All right. And you use that when you see at least two x's across from each other. And here's an example. So here's an example. We have 5e to the x times x to the third half. That's our function. 
Okay, so what I did was take the first function, which is 5e to the x, times the derivative of the second function, which is x to the third half, plus the second function, which is x to the third half, times the derivative of the first function, which is 5ex. That first line right there. Okay, so what we did was bring 5e to the x down, and we took the derivative of x to the third half. So just like the power rule, we would just bring it to the front. So we brought 3 halves to the front of x, and then we subtracted 3 halves minus 1. When you subtract 3 halves by 1, you get 1 half. So, again, we, got, we brought 5e to the x down and multiplied it by the derivative of x to the third half, which is 3 halves x to the, half, to the half power, plus your second function, which is x to the third half, times the derivative of your first function. Now, in this case, um, just like I said, e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is always going to be e to the x. 5 just comes along for the ride. Um, so, it stays the same. Okay? Now, we bring it down. So, when we multiply 5 e to the x times 3 halves x to the half power, we just brought it down, and we divided it all by 2 because you're multiplying both together. So you divide both of them by 2, and then you add 5x to the 3 half power to e to the x. So all we did was bring 5 to the front, because it's a constant, you bring it to the front. And then I got 15e to the x, which is from 5 and 3, times x to the 1 half. And basically 5 and 3, 15e to the x, you bring it to the front. Uh, uh, x um, times x to the one half, and all we got was you know, since you brought three and five to the uh, front, you're left with one, which is basically x plus five x to the half power to the three half power e to the x, and that is your answer right there. Next we have the derivative of trig functions, Ooh, okay. which is fairly simple as well. The derivatives of trig functions are simple, depending on if you know. So, you have sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So, the derivative of sine of x equals cosine of x. Okay, next we have the derivative of cosine of x equals negative sine. Next we have the derivative of tangent of x equals secant squared of x. So, here's those three. Next, we have the derivative of cosecant is equal to negative cosecant x times the cotangent of x. Okay, so that's cosecant, the derivative of cosecant. Then we have the derivative of secant of x, which is equal to secant which is equal to secant of x times tangent of x. And then lastly, we have the derivative of cotangent of x, which is equal to cosecant squared, negative cosecant squared of x. Easy way to remember the cos, which would be cosine, cosecant, and cotangent, is to remember that the answer that comes out will always be negative. So just right here in cosine, just right here in cosine, it would be negative sine. Just right here with cosecant, it would be negative cosecant x cotangent x. And just right here in cotangent x, it would be negative cosecant squared of x. 
and those are our derivatives of trig functions. Then we have chain rule. Okay? So chain rule is just the function, the derivative of a function. So what you would do is with the chain rule, you would take the function, the, the outside function, and multiply it by the inside function. So we're going to do an example, derivative of e to the negative x. So we have e to the negative x and take the derivative of negative x. That's all I did right here. Had e to the negative x and I took the derivative. I took e to the negative x, so all I did was rewrite that part, and then I took the derivative of the outside function. The outside function in this case would be negative x, right here. Okay? Then that would equal e to the negative x times negative 1. Okay? So, basically all I did was, like I said, take the derivative, uh, take the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of our outside function in this case was just negative 1 because when x is just x alone, it's just 1. Okay, so when we took the derivative of negative of negative x, it gave us negative one. And in this case, our answer would just be negative e to the negative x power. And the reason why our answer would be negative e to the negative x power is because we just multiply this by negative one. So we multiply e to the negative x by negative one, and all we did was bring the negative to the front of e, and we're left with negative e to the negative x. Last, we have the natural log derivative. And basically, um, when you have natural log, which is ln, taking the derivative of natural log ln of x is just 1 over x. Simple as that. The natural log of x, taking the derivative of the natural log of x, is just 1 over x. And this is just the graph of the natural log, just like e to the x goes up like this. Natural log is just like this. So you're approaching, you're getting closer and closer to zero when you're getting, when you're going downward and you're getting closer and closer to infinity on this way. Okay. That's it. Um, this is my video on derivatives for Dr. Lewis's uh, Calculus 1 class. Um, I hope everybody got a good understanding of what derivatives are, and I hope I helped in some type of way. Thank you. Yes. It's over. Oh, yes, God. Oh, God. Did I just take a video of myself? Oh, dig it.